All right, welcome back to Study Ball. The preseason is over, uh, but as we finish up the preseason, I want to take a look at a couple young quarterbacks this week. Today, I want to look at Justin Fields, a guy that was thrown in last year, I think, ahead of schedule, uh, wasn't quite ready to be in that situation, and so a lot of growing pains last year. Now, slated as the starter, gets to go through camp as the starter, and we're seeing him get more and more comfortable each and every game. This past preseason game, probably the most comfortable, the best football game that he's played as a pro, uh, but still some of the same issues are showing up. So I want to take you guys through the tape and we can see where there's some excitement uh, and, and we're starting to see the growth from year one to year two. Chicago fans should be excited, but there's still some things that I'm seeing that I, I want him to get better at and specifically that's recognizing and pulling the trigger, being decisive with what he's seeing, why he's seeing it, and getting the ball out of his hands. Let's take a look at the tape. All right, so here we go. Uh, first pass of the preseason game. So you guys see the shell that the defense is, is playing. So shell is what we talk about back here. This is the shell of the defense, and it looks like they're going to go to some too high shell. Could roll up at the corners, or they could drop these guys back and go quarters here. But that's what we need to recognize as a quarterback. So uh, on this particular side, they're going to run a go route out here and they're going to run a choice out to this side. So you've got to make that decision. If you think it's cover two, it's not necessarily the best play because safety is going to go cover him and you basically have a double team and in and out on that guy. If you get this guy to fall back, now we feel pretty good that we can gain leverage to this side. So what Justin Fields should be looking at as he comes off is right there. Okay, right there. See the corner, open his hips and start to get depth. If that's the case, his eyes are to that side. He's got the choice route right there. Everything's set up, throw the ball, throw the ball. This is what I'm talking about in terms of the hesitation. Like what are we hesitating for? Okay, you're ready to, to come out and see this. You know you're gonna win off of this guy. All eyes right here. He turns his hips and he starts to get depth. Get that ball on your receiver right out of the break. Let it go. Let it go. Doesn't let it go. Now it becomes a throwaway. Now, I get it, okay? If you say, well, I'm worried that it's cover two over here and I'm going to get the two on one. If that's the case, then X off that side because we've got triple slants back here. So if you say, I don't like that and I'm really worried about that side and them rolling up, no problem. We've got the numbers on the other side because we've got three guys, you see it? Three guys going inside. So we'll read this guy first. He comes inside. We'll read this guy. He comes inside. We go outside. If any one of these guys on the interior pushes past their guy, there we're going to take it. This guy pushes past. We'll take it. So we've got numbers with the concept over here to the left-hand side. If this guy is a concern for you right off the bat and you're not really sure, you can read it back to the other side. But because Justin Fields started over there, okay, you started over there. That was your choice. See what you need to see. He's out, complete the football, take it right now. No hesitation. Hesitation leads to a sack. We saw too much of this or a throwaway. We saw too much of this last year. Okay, so I'm never really a fan of this play. So this is, okay, what we call the drive play. So it's a shallow, it's an in, and it's a check down working over here with this guy doing some solo route to that side. So reason I don't like it is because most defenses have a guy in that zone, a guy in that zone, and a guy in this zone. So we've got guys to cover all of the receivers. But the way this thing is read is it's always started out. Okay. You have your alert. You don't like it here because corners off. No problem. We're reading this guy. This guy moves it all. The shallow gets the ability to read this. So he's not going to just keep running into that defender. He gets the ability to read this play. So if that defender's there. He's going to hook it up right there. So that should be our first read. There it is right there. There it is right there, right in front of him. First read, he's starting to pull up. This defender's going that way. That's where the ball needs to go right now. Okay, you see Justin Fields, whether he got off of it too quick 
and now he's got his eyes and his feet going over in this direction and you're going to see it covered, covered, covered. He's got nothing else. So again, I'm not a big fan of this concept, but everybody runs it. Uh, but if you're going to run it, you have to understand when a defense has the perfect look and has those defenders inside, which is going to be most of the time. This is what we're looking at. We're looking at the shallow. And if he stops and reads it right, I got to put it on his inside shoulder right there. Can't get off of it too soon. I got to be ready to stick it on the inside shoulder and get what I can get because there's not a lot else happening on this particular play. And to me, Justin Fields is again, again, just impatient and getting off of it. But here's what we love, right? He's definitive uh, when he decides to take off. And now he goes and gets us a nice pickup in a first down with his feet. But I want to see him better in the pocket and more decisive with what he's seeing. Now, I'd love this stuff, okay? We're going to limit things and we're going to run basically two receiver route with the play action. So you pick a side, best look side with the corner off. Okay, we get the pull, understand where your check downs are. We got check downs going to the flat, but sides over here to the left hand side, gets the pull right here and watch. He's definitive. Boom, foot in the ground, balls out. Great throw. Definitive. Foot in the ground, quick hitch, balls out, drives it, money throw, chunk throw. That's what we need to see more of. Okay, do we need to limit the playbook? Do we need to make it a little bit simpler conceptually for him at this stage in his career so he can just play football? Because right there, that was really, really well done. Okay, this one here. All right, this concept, we looked at this concept with Kenny Pickett last week. Okay, so we're running this concept. To me, this concept over here is a man concept. If you didn't see the Kenny Pickett one, here's why it's a man concept. Because this corner route is going to go into a, a deep defender over here. We've got two inside routes. We've got two inside underneath defenders. So it's not really good against a zone because you got guys going, you got our offensive guys running to different zones, allowing a defense to cover it. You get man, chase, chase. Now you've got runaways against man all over the place, but it's not really a zone concept. So you get a zone look, okay? You've got the concept over here that puts your back on a choice. I think they're running a go route here on the outside. So right there, boom, that's the throw, okay? You decide to go, and he's looking over here to this side again. You decide to go over here, okay? I'm gonna see my inside guy, he gets depth. Now it's one-on-one -on, -one on this guy. Gotta be ready to throw the football on the break. We can't expect things to come open on the other side because it's not really a zone beater. So again, you see it right here, right? He's coming into a zone. He's going to run a return. He's coming right into this zone. This guy's running back here into this zone. That's the throw right there. He's looking at it. That's the throw he should take. He goes from the backside to the front side and just turns and throws it because he sees an opening. Okay. Dangerous throw. This guy, if he's playing this a little bit better, uh, he's got a chance to intercept that ball or make a big hit. Now, another unbelievable throw by Justin Fields. He turns back, he sees it, he rips it, and that is a great throw in between two defenders. That is a big time throw. But to me, I need to understand why. I need to know what he's seeing. So when he comes back to this side, he's got to see this corner over here to know he can make this throw. All right, let's go back and watch his eyes. I know not everybody believes what I'm selling, watch his eyes, okay? His eyes, where do his eyes go? Eyes are over here, okay? So he's reading that side, reading that side, reading that side, reading that side, there it is. There's the throw right there. Now I want you to see how quickly his eyes come back to the other side. Boom, he's trying to find somebody, open sees it, throws it. Now you tell me, did he verify the corner and what the corner was doing there? I'm not sure, but he makes a heck of a throw and oftentimes a great throw can beat average defense, and that's exactly what happened there, but I wanna know why. It's gotta be about the why for Justin Fields. Okay, here's another split the field in half, okay? So we're pushing up, running a deep hook, pushing up, running a deep hook, we got a flat. Cut the field in half. Make the game easier for him. What are you seeing? See this guy. This guy pulls out, you're looking to throw this deep hook. This guy pushes to the deep hook, you work right back inside. Here's another one. I know what I'm looking at. See it? One hitch, rip it. Love it. Definitive. Knows what he's looking at. 
When he steps into the throw, money throws, another chunk throw, really, really well done on these concepts where he can stay to the same side, knows exactly what he's looking at, and get the ball out of his hands. All right, this one here, okay, this is just playing pitch and catch. Great route up top by Pettis. It's just one-on-one, -on -one. but I love the touch. I love the pace. He's not overthrowing it. I know he can do these sorts of things. Nice, easy ball for the touchdown. So not a lot of reading there, but hey, you got to be able to make the layups. When you got your one-on-ones, you got your guy winning, you got to be able to make the throw. Really good throw right there by Justin Fields. Okay, this one's tough. This one's tough. Okay, so this is a play we call wrap. So we're going to run this influence post uh, down the middle of the field. We're going to run a hook right here. And then by the way this guy's running it, so he's seaming inside, and then he's running like a 12-yard in route. Okay, so it's different than if he was running vertical and running a big in. So timing is essential on this. This happens quick. This has to be thrown outside the hash to the hash. Can't be thrown inside the hash at all. So we have to be ready to rip this ball. Okay, so as we come out, what are we looking at? Okay, we've got to see this guy. We've got to clear this guy out. But our read really comes off of this guy. If he attaches... I got to be ready to rip this throw right back behind. Okay, get your feet set. Get your feet set. Boom. That ball needs to be thrown already. Okay, we get this guy to sink inside. We get this guy to match. It's tight. I'm not saying this is easy. Okay, that's not an easy throw, but I got to be ready for the throw. I got to anticipate better. Hitch ball out. Ah, he's late. And again, it's bad. This guy jams it up and he comes outside. So we can't hit this late at all. There's no chance. But I've got to be ready if I'm going to make this throw. And these are the throws you got to make right now. Ball's got to be out. Okay, you missed that window. It's game over. He's not quite ready to throw. Now it becomes another scramble. Again, nice job. Buying himself some time. Being able to find a guy, make a throw on the sideline, move the chains. Well done on the ad lib, the second part of it, but still got to see him recognizing and getting ready, being ready to rip the ball, being ready to anticipate these throws. I like this right here. So we just got to double out. Boom. And then we replace. Okay. He's got his corner off right here. So he's looking for the outside guy. This guy buzzes hard. We replace inside. That guy doesn't buzz hard enough. Lay the ball up and over just like this. I like it. Really, really well done. Here, stick your foot in the ground. Sticks his foot in the ground. He holds on his back foot to get loaded up. This guy is moving. So I wouldn't mind if he came back to the inside, but he says, no, I've got the ability to lay this ball up and over where that guy can't get it. Bang, great throw, great decision, definitive. He looks really good. When he knows what he wants to do with the football, he looks really good. The hesitation is what's killed him early in his career, last year, and I'm still seeing it right now. Here you go again, all right? So this is a bad play call against this coverage. So I was talking about this on Twitter, a mirrored concept. So this is what we call double combo. So we're going flat and slant to both sides. Worst possible coverage is cover two. We got corners sitting outside. We got outside linebackers sitting inside. We got a corner sitting outside. We got an outside linebacker sitting inside. So really, none of those plays on the outside should be open. So normally when you get this play uh, against cover two, you're looking right inside right here and hoping that you can throw the ball off of this linebacker inside shoulder, outside shoulder, and simply just stick the ball on your tight end because that's the one-on-one -on -one matchup. And again, they've got a guy sitting there to cover it too. So it's not a great concept against cover two. But that's usually where you go. You're not ever really thinking out here because these guys are in the flat to come up and drive and take this away. Now, I don't know what they teach him on cover two. I would teach him go right in here and then, you know, we'll just have to recover off of it because I don't expect anything to be open out here. If you go in here, out there, and you look at that first and then you try to recover here, that gives that linebacker the chance to match to that. So that's why I like to go inside out. Here you see it, we're gonna throw the flat. They're gonna come up and make the tackle. So again, don't know what they're taught. Not a good concept against the coverage. So it's not all on Justin Fields. I would just say if you're a young quarterback, understand what you're probably not going to get. 
understand how important it is to get to this quickly. So if this guy simply just gets inside that Mike linebacker, you put it on his inside shoulder, you try to get a five yard completion and you go because that is your best option. If these guys out here play it as you have to expect them to play it, you wouldn't have anything on the outside or you throw it and that guy gets blown up or you throw it and that guy gets no yards or a couple yards because he fights through it. But not the best play call, but I still want to understand the why. Why outside instead of inside knowing you've got cover two on that? Okay, this is what we know he's good at. Get him out in space. And again, when you get him out in space, what happens? We limit the field, right? We limit the field. It's half field, so everything's in front of him and we're not asking him to see the entire field and progress from one side to the other. These are the things that he's better at and most young quarterbacks are better at early in their career, simplify it and keep it all in front of them. Now, not great on the concept here. They're running a post. Okay, so a normal naked, naked over, we've got a flat and we've got a post. Komet right here should, is running a wheel. He really should be taking this wider outside the numbers. If he takes this outside the numbers, I think that Justin Fields has a chance to hit this right now. But because Komet is so tight in here, that's a tough throw to make because you got bodies here and it, it's just not, not very good. So hard to know what he would have done if the concept was a little bit better, but He's coming off and does a nice job here. He's looking at the flat. He feels these guys come up as he's carrying out there because here's the thing, quarterbacks, you get out here and you have no pressure. You have no pressure. Yes, you can always take the flat. That's always the first read on a naked. But when you have no pressure, that gives you the ability to maybe just peek down the field a little bit and see if I can get the big one because I can always come back to the flat. See if I've got one of these bigger throws. It's what he does right here. He comes off. He looks at the deeper throw. He's ready to go to the flat. Now he feels the guy come up late. Boom. Now he finds his guy deep late. Nice little touch pass for the touchdown. Great way to finish the preseason. All right, so you're seeing some progress there. You're seeing him more comfortable with certain aspects of their offense. When they cut the field in half, when they give him concepts that he's comfortable with, you're seeing him get back there, see things with his eyes, quick hitch back there and rip the football with confidence. That's what I want to see more of from Justin Fields. You can tell the times when he's not confident, when he's not sure what he's seeing, more when it's full field reads where he's like, I'm not exactly sure where I should be going. Then he's in the pocket, he's hesitating. Now he's either got to make a play late or make a play with his feet. So that's the area of growth that I want to see. I want to see this offense give him more and more things he's comfortable with. And that doesn't just mean rolling out. There's only a limited number of things you can do when you roll out. So when people say, oh, just roll them out more, roll them out more. It's really, really hard on an offense because the defense knows when you roll to one side, everything's coming to that side. So I want to see more concepts that he can throw from inside the pocket, down the field that fit what he's really, really good at right now. And there's a number of concepts that will do that. Justin Fields has to get better in the drop back game when it's not just a half field read, when we have to read the whole field, we have to understand the big picture, what I'm looking at, what are my definitive reads, where do my eyes need to be, and then be ready and rip the football. We know he can do it. We saw it different times when he was confident. We need to gain that confidence throughout the entire playbook so we can fully see who Justin Fields can be at the NFL level.